Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service. And welcome uh, to those of you who are online. Please uh, like and share this. Uh, spread the word. That would be really good. Okay. Um, well, it's nice to be back. We were not here last week. It really felt weird not being here. Um, and we, we were travelling down, actually, from uh, Birmingham. So, uh, I had a long old trek, but it was good. And... Uh, so, um, just a comment, and, and uh, I want you to give Daphne a round of applause, and I'll tell you what, in a minute, hold on. Um, I, I listened, of course, to, to last week's, and um, I can't remember Daphne's exact words now, but she said something like, you know, the usual people are away, and she said something like, you've got second death. Oh. Well, absolutely not. I listened to it. And it was absolutely perfect. It was fine. So go on, give that to the and, and now I've been, and now I've embarrassed her. She's got bright red from the bit of her face I can see uh, apart from the bath. So okay, let's get started. So as usual, we'll start with a time of worship, and we're starting with God. I look to you. Um, just want to draw your attention to that picture. You'll notice it says God's way or my way. That's what I'm going to be talking about later. So I'm, I've got two hats on really this morning. I've got my worship leader's hat on and my preacher's hat on later. All right, here we go. God, I love you. I've got no sound. Can you mute it and then I'll unplug it and plug it back? Oh, there you go. All right, we're on.
Amen. Hallelujah. Now God reigns. Okay, so, um, as I said, my, my talk is um, God's way, not my way. Uh, and one of the reasons why it's God's way and not my way is because our God still reigns. Yeah, okay. If he didn't, perhaps it would be my way. But, uh, so we're, our next song, of course, is very appropriate because it's called Waymaker. <laughs>
because, uh, again, one of the things I'll be talking about later is if we want to know God's way, the way in which he wants us to go, he does need to be the centre of our lives. Okay, so be the centre. Savior's love. 
but they're actually in unbelief. But the reason for the unbelief is because there's grief in the heart. And I don't know whether the grief is about the, this particular situation that they're believing for, or whether it's another situation, but the Lord wants you to just let go of the grief. You can let go of it today. Because Jesus' arms are open, his hands are open to take that grief from your heart so that you can believe. So, uh, can we pray together for these two situations? Father, first we lift this person that needs salvation. We lift them to you. And we lift also the people that are holding fast for this person. Lord, strengthen them in their faith. Give them more words to stand on, more of your word to strengthen their faith in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for the salvation of that person. We call it done, Father, in Jesus' name. We stand together against the wiles of the enemy in Jesus' name. And with regard to the grief, Father, now in the name of Jesus, we believe that person or these people have let go of the grief and we lift it off in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of his name and his blood. That grief is now gone in Jesus' name. Father, I say strengthen their hearts, strengthen their faith, give them words, Lord, give them a new, fresh revelation of your word concerning this situation, whatever it is, Father, and we call it done. And Father, we, we speak to those hearts now. We say, pour in your healing balm, Lord. Pour in your healing balm. Only you can heal broken hearts. We've sung about hearts, broken hearts this morning. We've said that the Lord is here to heal, and he is here to heal now. So, Father, we thank you for pouring in your healing balm to each and every hurting, grieving heart. We thank you for the faithfulness of your word, and we call these things done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Diana. Okay, so um, it's now time uh, for... Uh, Colin's going to come up and do a couple of notices, I think, uh, and then we're going to take communion. Hopefully, all of you should have one of these little, uh, little things, little pots with uh, some juice and other wafer in. Uh, if you haven't got one, can you indicate? I'm going to see if you can get one. But, mm, no, you've all got one, that's good. Okay, I'm with Colin. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, well that's one or two things. Well, what a week we have for some of you who are working a bank holiday. And more importantly, Thursday, of course, the local elections, and we need to be praying into that, obviously, that God will guide us as we, as we vote on Thursday, with those that, uh, that can. Uh, several of our folk, uh, well, a couple of our folk uh, are going on for a minor operation, one for something a bit more major, uh, we don't mention names because we're live, but just to say that you will know that one of our folk uh, some time ago now had a heart operation, still in a great deal of pain. He's going to London on, on Friday uh, to see if they can sort that out. So if we pray for him, if you don't know who it is, ask me afterwards, uh, and we'll pray for folk after the communion. Uh, as I say, it's, uh, it's a busy week, uh, really, in some ways, and uh, a snooker final. <laughs> And most importantly of all, of course, no, not Doug Burris, who paid for Burris' wallpaper, but we might know, who H's. Nobody's watched Line of Duty, obviously. Watch some television, you people, you know what the rest of the nation are doing. Okay, more seriously. Let's uh, go. Well, no, the other thing is that uh, there's a new, uh, two new, or three new Evangelical Alliance magazines at the back. Please take them, we don't want them left behind. Um, this is the May-June edition, just arrived this week, so please take those. And there's also some leaflets there, I don't think we actually noticed, we mentioned were there, uh, about the local schools work. And uh, please take those, because uh, obviously at this moment, they're still going on, they're doing a lot of uh, videos to go into school and for assemblies and so on. So we continue to pray for the schools work, 
and if you don't know much about it, but those leaflets will help you pray in, in your knowledge too. Okay, let's remind ourselves of Scripture, and uh, then we'll go into communion. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we just pray now that you will help us as we begin to prepare just for this uh, part of the service, Lord, just part of the whole service, that uh, we uh, will just have a fresh insight into what this passage means to us. Lord, we know that we praise you for what it does mean, but Lord, we just pray that there's something new uh, from you this week, this morning as we take these elements. Amen. So as we take them, uh, I'll explain what to do with the uh, things you've been given, if you're not quite sure again. And uh, we'll take them, and then just a time of quiet for you to pray uh, after each of them. I'll put the microphone down, I'll watch, I can't do anything with, the, uh, with our communion sets. So I'll speak very loudly, <laughs> hopefully it'll pick up down there. I'll remind the first of all that the Lord uh, says, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you peel back the see through uh, element on the top, I should have brought my reading glasses because I can never quite see, especially if I've got a cataract as well, and you'll find the uh, wafer. So let's take that together in remembrance of what, of what Christ has done for us. same way he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. If you haven't already, peel back the silver part on top, and, and let's take this together. especially in this week, uh, over this next few weeks, in fact, Lord, for some of the fellowship going to hospital for minor ops, uh, one going to London for probably an operation. For others we know who are unwell in their fellowship, those we haven't seen for some time, Lord, we lift them up to you, praying that you will bless them. We pray that you will bring healing to them, Lord, at this time as they continue to have treatment or maybe it's an ongoing thing and we just pray for strength for them that you will uphold them at this time and so we pray in your name but now that as we bring you to as we hear your word the message that you have given to Barry that you will bless him as he seeks to bless us and that we might indeed not just be hearers but doers of the word. Amen.
hopefully we've grown up. <laughs> and and um, so we, we decided to do this um, trip. Or, or, or it may, I say we, it might have been me, actually. Um, and to be honest, we got lost. We didn't know which way to go. And in Abbott's Woods, there aren't really any of those signposts, I don't think, or if there are, there certainly aren't many. Um, but I, I sort of um, put my navigator's hat on, if you like, and I, I, of course, could see it was a sunny day, and I could see where the sun was. And it was late afternoon, sort of early evening, so where would the sun be? What direction would the sun be in? West. West, exactly. Some, 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 some of you are all right. Um, so, so the sun, of course, rises in the east, sets in the west. So I knew that if I put the sun on my left, which is west, and I travel with the sun on my left, I will be heading... Which way? North. North, yeah, exactly. And I knew that north was the way to the car park. And so eventually... We did get back to the car park. So it's in, it demonstrates that it's important to know the way. Now, um, any of you remember maps? You know, those things we used to use before sat navs, yeah? Yeah. Sat -navs. yeah, we all use sat navs now, of course. Um, and um, well, I can remember uh, when we used to use maps, and my lovely wife, Pam, of course, she would be the navigator when we were travelling anywhere. Um, uh, she, she's embarrassed now because she knows what I'm going to say. We were, we were fine if we were travelling north. Because all maps have north at the top, you know, and, and the rest in the right place. So if you're travelling north, um, Pam could say, all right, OK, you know, a few miles up the road, we'll turn left. And that was great, you know, we'll travel and we'll turn left and we're still heading in the right direction. The problem is if we're coming home <laughs> and we're travelling south. Because Pam would still look at the map and say, you know, a mile down the road we've got to turn right. <laughs> when in actual fact, we've got to turn left because we're travelling in a different direction to the map. These days, of course, we use that now, so no problem. Hey. So it's important to know the right way. Okay. So, have you ever wondered what God's plan is for you? As a Christians, of course, we want to make decisions according to God's will. But what happens when we just do not know which way God wants us to go? We often know what way we want to go, especially if we're travelling. I mean, we've travelled up to... Um, uh, Blackpool last week, or uh, Lidham St. Mans, which is near, near Blackpool. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of knew which way to go, and we had the sat nav to help us as well. Um, but very often, when we're travelling on, shall we say, life's journey, we don't know which way to go. Sooner or later in life, everybody must make some decisions. Which college or university, perhaps, should I go? Whom should I marry? Most of you have already done all that, I know. But, uh, should I move here or there? The list goes on and on, and the questions grow bigger and more life challenging. Shouldn't God's answers and plan for our lives be clearer and clearer as well? And if we want to do his will, shouldn't it be easier to see God's plan for us and which direction to go? It can be difficult to see God's plan and know which road to take or which door to open. We pray to God and we ask for help, but there are often no prophetic dreams. Sometimes there are, but often there aren't. Visions or strong feelings, perhaps, we don't necessarily get either. Leading you, you know, one way or another. Perhaps it can feel like God is not answering at all.
many Christians struggle with this because we almost expect a loud voice from heaven when we talk to God. Complete with trumpets <laughs> and a burst of sunlight. So we kind of expect, Oi, you, down there, don't go that way, go that way. Ta-da! Yeah? That's the kind of thing that, that perhaps uh, we expect. And that might happen on occasions. Um, I, I can think of one specific occasion when I, I heard the audible sound of God. Uh, it's only, I think it's only happened this once. Uh, I think I've told you the story before. I won't go into the detail now. Um, but, but basically, uh, a lady friend of ours uh, had a, a vision, a picture, and I heard God say, that's for you. And I knew exactly what it was about. It was about speaking in tongues, actually. At that time, I didn't speak in tongues. I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit, but I didn't speak in tongues. And as a result of that, I spoke in tongues. Um, and uh, if those of you that are watching this have got no idea what I'm talking about, well, please go on our website, send me a message, and I'll try and, try and explain what I'm talking about. I haven't got time to explain that now. So, we might want to hear the audible voice of God, and it does happen occasionally, but not necessarily all the time. It says in Colossians 3.23, And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men. This is the key point. It isn't always so important what we do, but why and how we do it. Are we doing it wholeheartedly because we want to please the Lord? Or are there a few selfish reasons behind our decision? It also says in Matthew 7, verse 7, Ask, and it will give it, be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. God is more willing to show us his will and plan for our lives. But he also wants us to show that we want to know his will and follow it. So our part is important. He wants us to make an effort to seek his will. Then he has promised that we will find it. That's a promise. It isn't, you know, it might happen. It will happen. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, and most of you will, think, will know this one, it's often quoted, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. So God has plans for you. Your life isn't haphazard, it isn't um, a series of coincidences or accidents. God has a plan or plans for you. So if you're asking and seeking and knocking and doing everything as to the Lord, then you can rest assured that he will show you his will for your life. If you think he is not showing you his will for your life, and that may be so, it may be because you are not doing some of the things that we've just mentioned. His will may not always be what we expect, yeah. and that's an important point. Yeah. Uh, we often imagine what God's will is for us, and we often get it wrong. I know I have. Many times. Um, God is full of surprises. He often does things entirely different to what we expect. So, it can be revealed to us in unexpected ways, but if we are truly interested, we will find it. God's 
will is good, acceptable, and perfect. Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what, what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it's about renewing our minds, changing the way we operate, if you like. Put simply, this is the entirety of God's will right here. Get that? I'll repeat that. Put simply, this is the entirety of God's will right here in that verse that we just read. As well as his plan with our lives, that we be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we prove God's will. That is something we can do regardless of whether we decide to become a doctor, a teacher, or a bus driver, or move to another country, or stay at home. There are always opportunities to be transformed and renewed wherever you are. Even if you're in the wrong place, actually. Because you might be. So how should we make our decisions? Perhaps we should ask ourselves, is it good? Is it acceptable? Is it perfect? If the answer seems to be yes, then do it. Prove what is God's will. Test it. God doesn't mind being tested. Um, those of you who are, um, are parents will know that your children test you often. And God is quite happy with being tested. He who seeks will find. Whatever the outcome when looking back, we may find that what we did was actually tainted with a bit of self-seeking, some demands on others and so on. This may not have been according to God's will. And yet, we made our decision in faith and with a desire to serve God. And I guess that's the important thing. God doesn't mind when we get it wrong sometimes. Again, you who are parents will know that you didn't mind when the kids got it wrong sometimes. That is why God can now show us how we could have done it better, where we should have given up on our own will. Go back and fix things. Ask for forgiveness. Set things right. It is this that is God's will for us and his plan for our lives. That we learn humility. That we learn how to live as disciples. The revelation comes in an unexpected way by showing us our mistakes. But because we are seeking to do God's will, we use it to be transformed. This perhaps is the renewing of our minds. Many Christians struggle with this because we almost expect a now. Oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong page. Should I say that bit? <coughs> a disciple is not one that knows everything. And I, I'm a disciple, they certainly don't know everything. My children will probably tell you they see that. They think I think I do, but no, it's not true. Um, so, yes, everything, and can do everything perfectly the first time. The life of a disciple means following Jesus, obviously, uh, the master, and learning from him. I take great comfort in this bit. The disciples that were with Jesus did not always get right, get things right. In fact, I believe <laughs> that they often got things wrong. They quite often got things wrong. Like us, they had to learn from their mistakes. Yes. So uh, that, that gives me a lot of comfort because I think it's great. In fact, like all, most of the characters in the Bible, even you know, most of the Old Testament characters, they made huge mistakes. They got lots of things wrong. But they're in God's Word. 
And I think they're in God's word to teach us just that. That we can get things wrong, but if we acknowledge that before God, he's willing to forgive us. He's often willing to give us another chance. It means listening to God's voice every day and striving to be well-pleasing to him. In this way, perhaps we will find more and more that we should have done things better. Certainly not done things as Frank Sinatra has suggested my way. Perhaps God will give us strength and wisdom to humble ourselves and do it better next time. So next time, we will put into practice what God's voice told us and do it better. We should try to become more like our master day by day. That, I think, is what it means to be a disciple. No matter where we go, we will find opportunities to hear God's voice and do his will. Now again, we might not hear that audible shout, but God can speak to us through his word, through other disciples, through our Christian friends, all sorts of places God chooses, uh, through his word, of course, to speak to us. So we will find our own life, our own anger and pride, our stubbornness and self-seeking, and by putting these things to death, we are transformed more and more into Jesus' image. And in this way, we are doing God's will. Unfortunately, this is God's perfect plan for both you and me. Sorry, not unfortunately, ultimately. <laughs> Can't read my own writing. Ultimately, this is God's perfect plan for both you and me, that we become free from the way that we are and be transformed into Jesus' own image. I believe this is a very hopeful gospel. I think you really can't go wrong with it. Now, I think my time has gone, uh, and I was going to uh, read out some scriptures, but um, what I'll probably do is I'll put them on the website, uh, and then you can, you can look at these later. Um, I will just uh, perhaps read this first one, because I think this is a very important one. You all know it, I'm sure. Romans 8.28, one of my favourite scriptures, actually. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. And that's from Romans 8.28. So, as I say, I've, I've got about 15 scriptures here, but my, my time is gone. So, I'll give, actually, I'll give you the verses. I won't read them. I was going to read them. But I'll give you the verses so that you can note them down. Uh, you can obviously get them on the recording. Uh, and as I said to you, I, I will actually post, put this on, on our website as well. So, Proverbs 16, 9. Psalms 32, verse 8. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Psalm 37, 23, Proverbs 19, 21, Proverbs 23, 18, Psalms 139, verse 16, Isaiah 14, 24, Ephesians 2, 10, Psalm 138, verse 8, Ephesians 1, 4 and 5, the step, uh, sorry, uh, Psalm 37, uh, 23 and 24. Ephesians 1, 9 and 10. And finally, Philippians 1, verse 6. God bless you, let's pray. Father, we, we thank you that we know that you want to reveal your plans for our lives to us. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to have listening ears. Uh, I've often said that we've got two ears and one mouth, and that, that means we've got to listen twice as much as we speak. Um, so, Father, I pray that you will help us to listen for that still, small voice when you are speaking to us. 
uh, and uh, to uh, uh, to hopefully find your plan or plans for our lives. So, Father, we we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that we have, uh, and we thank you, Lord, that we're we've still been able to meet together like this, even during this lockdown uh, lockdown period. And we thank you, Lord, that gradually things are uh, are being uh, unlocked and, and allowing us to to do more and more. So we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Well, the Lord bless you. Um, have a good week, and we look forward to seeing you. <laughs>